Watch out in the crowd. It's coming your way. Bang, bang, 6-6. Six, six. Fabulous innings. Fabulous game. Fantastic tournament. Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't get the last Infinity Stone, but uh, we are. We're standing up, although emotionally, I feel like I need to be laying down still after the Proteus went out um, at the last hurdle. You and I have a very different views on, uh, on that performance, and uh, I think that's a good thing for cricket. But let's just use that from the jump off. Yeah, I just, Elon, I just want to know, will we ever get to Mars? <laughs> Will we ever get to Mars, okay? I'm busy with Neuralink at the moment, so... Uh, we needed Thanos from those last 24 <laughs> yeah, balls, I can tell yeah. you that much. In Arniston this weekend, my favorite place to, to escape. In a hotel room while Gil and Pike were on the beach, on my own, Corona in the left hand, Jürgen Meyer in the right hand. I eventually paused 24 balls, 24 runs, 6 wickets, and I thought, not even the Proteus can lose this one. Yeah. Hey, and they found a way. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was they, crushed. Eh? <laughs> I've banned myself from ever being on X an hour after, <laughs> after a game like that. I haven't been so invested in a cricket playoff game since 1999. Yeah. It was Alan Donald all over again, but only worse. Eh? They gave us so much hope and then crushed me. <laughs> yeah, I felt the same. I, uh, I, I, like I said to you in a text during the game, I couldn't go home. I, uh, I watched the game at my uh, football club um, because I'd just be a mess at home. I'd be, I, I, I had to watch it in the, with the safety of other people around. Um, and I was crushed. But I think in the context of, if you, I think there's a broader context to consider for the Proteus, in my view. And by the way, the people that are saying that, that the Proteus choked this and that, that, I think there's a value in the diversity of using cricket in any sport that is. Um, so, in my view, I think the context of this campaign needs to be taken into account. They got, they, I mean, they've struggled in, in T20 cricket in this calendar year. They got white for the West Indies coming into, um, into this tournament um, and played on extremely difficult wickets for the first three uh, matches of the World Cup there. So, I think the expectations were low um, and I think... I think that's why people, lots of people were able to enjoy the ride, so to speak, throughout the tournament. And then, um, you know, that they, they, the steam just kept building and building. And it became clear that, that, that there was something special about this unit. And um, that didn't change for me because of the result of the final. Um, I was really proud of them. I was really proud of this team. And, um, and it's hard to... It's hard to build a cricket argument against, uh, like just a pure cricket argument against them not closing it out there. But I think there are mitigating factors. And the one big, you know, if, if they were in, the, in those positions against um, West Indies, even Australia, who haven't been playing good T20 cricket, basically any other, any other cricketing nation in the world, if they were in those positions in the final, then I'd go like, yeah, that's, that's a choke. But India are exceptional, and um, and Bumrah in particular um, just changed that game for them completely. He wasn't the sole determinant of the result, but I thought he was match defining when he needed to be, and um, and so that's just my perspective on it. Um, will the Proteas look back and lament like things they could do better? Of course, but I think those teams are so close that if they had played a fictional ten match series. That series ends 6-4 to India or 5 all, in my view. And I think that is the, that is the kind of context that I apply to, to my reading of that final. Look, um, my old man used to say Saturday was for celebration or tears. Sunday was for rest and Monday was for reflection. So we say talk about it on Monday. And Saturday night, I was an emotional wreck. I mean, I was just... There was no reflection. There was no kind of, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's understand this. It was, this is our time. And from a, just a cricketing point of view, 24 off 24, six wickets in hand, it, there's no way they can lose it. But then what you said is, India possessed the best fast bowler in T20 cricket, probably the best fast bowler at the moment in all formats in Boomer. He was sensational. Uh, he was well supported. Um, Incredible catch that was taken. A view I've always had is that once it's cleared the rope, you shouldn't be able to catch it. Mm. Um, 
uh, as in rugby, uh, at a time they would lift the lock up to knock down the long range penalty and then they kind of uh, stopped that and said the kicker has to kick it over the bar. If it's over the bar, it's, it's three points. The same should be, because there are incredible catches being taken by a two-man team now. I yeah. run, jump, flick it back, you catch it and the guy's out. So when does he clear the rope or when doesn't he? And that's something I think people need to look at as well. Yeah, Moving especially forward. with the, the, the conversation around how better dominated um, this you know this game is. People will, people will argue that um, the bowlers and fielding sides, um, you know, should be afforded the, let's say, the luxury or if they've got the skill to intercept the ball in the same way that um, that Yadav did um, right at the end there. That's just, that's just you know, the bowlers getting the, um, the just rewards for this missing a player or, and, and, and these fielders showing an excellent um, bit of skill to help the bowler dismiss that player, but I completely hear you on this issue, and I'm I'm in your camp completely. And look, I mean, it's it's again South Africa World Cups. Did it really need to be us to be on the receiving end of the greatest outfield catch? <laughs> in a <laughs> probably World in the final, yeah. World Cup for history yeah. of World Cup finals. So we talk about reflection on Monday and that kind of thing. And when you kind of bring it back and you look look at it as un, as objectively and unemotionally as one can. It's also not quite as simple as 24-24 when you mm -hmm. look at the context of the players. So the moment Klaassen got out, we were in trouble. Right. Because the quality of batter that was coming in was not big match finishes. Right. So Miller was key there. Mm -hmm. And then Miller got out in the most freakish way because he cleared the fence yeah. and was caught. So, um, and then they were tied up. The likes of, of, of uh, Maharaj and, and Janssen were tied up by of the best <coughs> bowlers playing that format. So right. looking at it like that, 24 from 24 doesn't seem quite as big a choke as it did yeah, on and, Saturday night. And I, I say to you that um, that building on the context that you provided now, in a situation where, if India were in a situation where they five down, Jadeja comes in. Um, and I know they sent, they sent um, Axel up the order and he done really well there. But in a similar situation, Jadeja comes in for India. We had Marco Janssen, whose claim to fame with the bat was a diff, like a, a really a match-winning six that he hit for us. Um, but those aren't the same players. No, and uh, and again, just looking at... Look, it was a great final for the independent. I've, I've, I, I didn't even want to go online to read reports. But I yeah. went and read, not from South African or Indian media, but from other media, and they were just this raving about the quality of the final. We were chasing the highest ever final, uh, score in a, in a T20 final. Just looking at how the track played... I kept on thinking, geez, if we can just limit them to 160, 165, I think we've got this. 180 could be 10 runs too much. And, uh, and then again, credit to Kohli. I mean, we may have played him into form in three balls. He scored pretty much this. He had scored 75 runs in, in eight innings or seven innings going into this final and ended up with 75 or 50 odd balls. But he got them to that 177. Yeah. And sure, because if he had got out, it may have been a 140, 145. So yeah. the great players cometh the moment they are there it was a wonderful way for him to go out um i just felt we've been raving about Aidan markham's captaincy about his bowling changes when, when jansen went for a big one in that opening over he came on and he bowled really well for those two overs yeah. but i just felt that he had under bowled himself possibly by one under uh, under bowled the other spinners um, and overbold Janssen potentially by one. Yeah. Or we should have maybe not even brought him back. In yeah, the that's, of the that's very fair. I said, I said that to you as well. I agreed with you on that point where I said, um, you know, I was watching and, I, and it looked like Markram had signaled to somebody else after his second over. He looked like he had signaled to somebody else. And I was like, I hope he doesn't take himself off now because he's bowling really, really well. And, um, and you know, you could see that... Um, who was it? Was it Axa? It was a left-hander in at the time. Was um, was trying to line him up, but the potential for him to get out, for a batter to get out doing that, specifically to that length and that line that Markram was bowling, um, was significant. I didn't see him going past the. I didn't see him going past the edge and potentially bowling him, or um, or getting an LBW because the wicket wasn't turning enough for that. But um, but. For one to sky it, odds on. And so we've been like lavishing our praise of Markram throughout this tournament. But I felt that he made, I agree with you, I felt that he made a tactical error um, on, those, on those bowling changes. And, we, and we've spoken often throughout the World Cup that 
he, he really has the potential to develop into a proper all-rounder. Proper. That bowls his four overs. Yep. That's not a, a, a makeshift option uh, and can bat anywhere in the top four. Yeah. Um, and I just want him to kind of hopefully he'll believe in himself more and invest more in his bowling yeah. because I think he can become a very significant part of that of that SA attack uh, over the over the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, what I also admired was the way Quinny de Kock played. Um, it was very similar to Coley in that he played within himself but to make sure after Riza got out that he wasn't going to get out. Yeah. And then encouraging in the context of this team was how they all got in. Uh, Stubbs got in. Uh, Miller got in. Uh, Clarkson got in and then had that explosive over 24. Um, that, that's there. Yeah. The makings of the side are there. Janssen yeah. will only get better. Yeah. Uh, our spinners are right up there. And, you know, yeah. an overthrow here or there, yeah. a nick ball, the catch doesn't get taken. Yeah. And we may be talking about an incredible last ball win for South Africa. Yeah, the, Those are the fine margins. But in the context of Saturday night, I think it was they went into this World Cup yeah, if they make it out of New York, we'll be happy. Yeah. And then the more and more they just started making people believe. Yeah. We're actually a good side. We're actually a good side. And then the way they dismantled Afghanistan in the semifinal, got through other sticky games. And then I felt that even the way they pulled India back, uh, India then, it's, it's through the class of a guy like Kohli that they got to, and, and, and their, their batting lineup. Yeah. It was... This team can chase down a, a, a world record to yeah. win this thing. And they put themselves in that position to do it. Incredible gamesmanship from India when Pant went down. <laughs> I looked was like fuming. He, looked like he'd been hit by a bus. I was um, fuming, man. Don't know from where that bus came yeah. from. But it was like, you just thought, decisive moment. If we're not switched on here, because it completely killed that momentum of the 24 run over. Yep. And boom, first ball, feathered, outside off stump. And that, to me, was the game. Yeah. Classen, because... Then it was really just Miller that we had, right? Uh, and they could still starve, starve him of the ball. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that was the defining moment. And again, the experience of that Indian team, the experience of that captaincy between Rohit and Kohli and those guys to say we need to just pull this back. We need to have a bit of a chat now. Yeah. And whether it takes ten minutes or fifteen is going to be irrelevant. They yeah. can find us for whatever they want to do. Yeah. Uh, and that really was something that I think we will learn from as well. Yeah. Is when you get into those match-defining overs. It could take something off the ball that actually is, is very significant uh, in providing the winner. Yeah, I said <clears throat> in um, in a tweet after the game, I said, you know, at at this level and in and in these games, momentum ebbs and flows, and um, and the team that that takes um, hold of the momentum at the decisive points in the matches usually win, and so so it mattered that that we that we started well. Um, and we had them three down in no time. It mattered that we started well, but it wasn't definitive. It mattered that we got Kohli out when it did, when we did. It mattered that we that we got um, Patel out when when it did. But ultimately, the momentum shift in the game came at the with the incident that you that you mentioned. And when I saw him go down, I was like. Man, in a club cricket game, I'm doing exactly the same thing and have done the same thing to try and steal the momentum back for my team. And, um, and so I doubt that Pant was, was injured. Um, I think it was a master stroke of leadership um, or maybe a master stroke is overplaying it. It was, it was, it was really good gamesmanship. And um, at that point, I was like, okay, like, Klaassen, you've been around the block, bro. You've got to see what's happening here. Um, and I was disappointed at the way that he got out and when he got out, because that for me was the momentum shift that mattered. Um, and then they just they just ran with it from there. Um, but such fine margins in that game. I, I tweeted at the innings change. We need somebody to, to match Coley. To win the game, we need somebody to match Coley. Klaassen didn't get there. He done well, he didn't get there. He matched Patel. And, um, and we needed more than that. And, um, and I said that we needed to play their spin as well, which we did. We played them expertly and it put them under massive pressure. I thought that, I thought that Boomer would have bowled the, <laughs> the over that Patal bowled um, and, um, and really put us under pressure um, from there. But ultimately it worked out for India that, um, that even after that big over, Boomer came back and he, and he pulled it back and that just speaks to his quality. And, um, and so 
we match them in so many areas, but ultimately Boomer and Kohli were massive differences for India. Yeah, and if you look, I, I spoke about how with, within his game he played and he, and he really took ownership of that opening, uh, opening 10 overs, Quentin de Kock. But then he would have been disappointed in the way he got out. Mm. Like they set the trap and he, and he went the very next ball and right. he was caught. Uh, <clears throat> Stubbs, just as you thought he was going to go. Up, that bit of inexperience there yeah. as well. Uh, David Miller just had to go for it, but he was providing a perfect foil for Klaassen at that stage. Right. I mean, Klaassen survives that one ball. The yeah. chances are we win this thing. Right. And, and, and it's, it's the greatest moment in, in our white, white ball cricket. But well, you have to learn from that. Klaassen yeah. will be a better player for it. Yeah. Uh, the protests will be better for the experience, but there will also be that confidence of the core of that those players we're speaking about are kids mm. uh, in, in, in relative terms. And there's the makings of a very, very strong, consistent top four team. And if you're a top four team in T20, you can win, you can win big tournaments and you can win World Cups. And I think in two years' time, they can keep the core of this squad together. Um, That's they will arrive at that next World Cup, certainly uh, as contenders, as not as imposters. That's so interesting, and, and I want to close on this, is um, it's hard to look ahead now because the, the wound is still gaping. Gaping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm busy, I'm, I'm writing a piece for SA Cricket around this very issue. Um, do, does the core of that side make it to 2026 in India and uh, Sri Lanka? And, um, you know, I was just examining, like, where we're at. So, so from a batting point of view, um, I think we're okay. So... Riza is 34, Quinn is 31, Henry Klaassen is 32 um, or 34, I'm not sure. But the, the point is, is that the core of that batting lineup will be between 33 and 36 come the 2026 World Cup. And, um, and I use the example of Kohli. Kohli's, Kohli's in his late 30s now, having retired. Rohit Sharma is in his, in his late 30s, having retired. So there's a lot of promise there. Elite batters can play, especially T20 cricket, that's not so taxing physically um, on your body, can play into their late 30s. And then I looked at the other two. Um, Keshav and, um, and Shamsi are both 34, so they'll be 36 by the time the next World Cup comes around. Um, and again, you look at an example like uh, the world's top-ranked T20 bowler, Adil Rashid. He's 37. And so, <laughs> in my research, I thought uh, I was I was looking at um, Rashid Khan. I thought the guy was in his late thirties. He's twenty five, so, <laughs> so so that was quite a surprise to me. But the point the point remains that there's promise for the next World Cup. A lot of those guys may look at that World Cup and go like, "Okay, this is my last hurrah," um, because after that, I doubt they're making twenty twenty eight. Um, and then you have guys like like Aidan Markram, who's who's thirty. Um, Kahis Rubada, who's there and thereabouts. Um, Tristan Stubbs, who's a kid. Um, you know, Nokia, who's 30. So the core of that side are likely to contest that 2026 tournament, which is really encouraging for me. Yeah, if I, if I look at this one and I go back to the box in 2019, 2023, and when they won it in 2019, Rassi's response was, we'd actually earmarked 2023 as the one we felt we can win. This has been a bonus. And as they, as, and yeah. as they got past Japan, uh, New Zealand got knocked out because New Zealand had beaten them in the, in the round robin 23-13. They felt that belief was there. They just had to get past Wales and they always felt they could take England because of how they'd beaten them in South Africa. Yeah. And, and post that, it was like, these guys are good enough and things have to fall, go our way, but we are good enough side so to go win in France. Yeah. And then they beat the hosts and they beat England, they beat the All Blacks 12-11. That's why I think the core of the side must stay together because in a T20 format and where they play, spin bowler, batsman, that age is not overly significant as it would be as if it's a young fast bowler, a guy you need to be very athletic in the outfield. Right. Um, for five days, for instance, in test cricket, exactly, that, becomes, yeah. that becomes an issue then. And then the familiarity yeah. of, how, of these players playing in the IPL. Uh, so even though it will be split between two countries, they will be they'll, they'll, they will it will feel like they're at home again, uh, playing in India. And, and there will be a redemption. I mean, a guy like Klaassen, I think he wants that next World Cup and yeah. he wants it tomorrow. Yeah. And he wants to go in and finish the job. Yeah. And I think if I look at it in a calm, 
Monday reflection. Uh, it's a job not finished yet. And this team has got the capability of finishing the job in the next two years, but consistently growing and evolving their squad depth and winning more than they lose. But taking T20 cricket as the most serious short form format now yeah. in this country. And I think the SA20 has also uh, boosted that. But yeah, so much to take from it. And like you say, gutted, but, uh, but not despondent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because this team can get better. India's not going to necessarily get better when you see who's just walked out. Three giants of their, right. their white ball cricket have right. said no more T20s. So yeah, uh, as you said, proud of the boys. I mean, no one's going to be more gutted or shattered or disappointed than them. Yeah. Um, but hell, if we didn't have emotion, if there wasn't ramblings, there wasn't passion, um, as I say, keep your phone or uh, keep your phone like far away, post post the final like that. <laughs> but to feel so passionate about the Proteas again, to feel so emotionally charged up, yeah. to want that win. It was it was 1999. Yeah. Lance Clues on strike. Alan <laughs> Donald backing up. We can't lose this. So we <laughs> did. But uh, but yeah, they certainly have put the Proteas right back up there. Uh, when you talk about the top four or five teams in the world in, in T20, where is where the game's going to? Right. And South it's, Africa and is it's now the reason, one of them. And it's the reason CSA in the Future Tours program asked for their schedule to be heavily weighted in favor, favor of T20 cricket. So, yeah. So, it's been a great series. It's love yeah. chatting with you. Wonderful sparring with you on X. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I, I'm up against, uh, against a lot of brain power there in Elon. So... Uh, <laughs> Who took me off the ledge on Saturday night? <laughs> sent me a WhatsApp to say I'm thinking some of your, your some of your tweets are sounding a bit personal. They are personal. I'm angry. <laughs> but I rested Sunday. I stayed over in Honiston, and then kind of today. Look forward to chatting. But yeah, I mean, you made such valid points, and I think also like just how you managed to keep that perspective and calm, and possibly because you were at your football club while yeah, you were watching. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just sport is such a game of fine margins. Uh, you go back to Soccer World Cup, uh, um, Martinez doesn't save, yeah. the Messi story is not complete, Pollard doesn't kick, or Mahanga misses, it's a very different, we don't have yeah. Chase in the Sun too. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think there's, 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 there's far more hope for the Proteas T20 side, which then translates into ODIs and obviously the, the, the fabric of, of test cricket uh, than there was a month ago. Agree completely. And, um, and it's been an absolute pleasure. We'll, uh, we'll adjourn now to continue to lick our wounds, um, but, uh, but super proud of the boys and thanks for coming on this journey with me. Cheers, man. Watch out in the crowd. It's coming your way. Bang, bang, six, six. Fabulous innings. Fabulous game. Fantastic tournament.